Well, Mojo Nixon, thank you for joining us today at Infamous Interviews. And this documentary, you have a manifesto that's brilliant. I was doing some research on this, and on Wikipedia, it said you guys started filming this around 2014. Is that accurate? Yeah, you know, uh, Earl Freedom, my bass player, you know, his real name's Matt Eskey, but I'm going to call him Earl Freedom. Earl Freedom actually saw this documentary uh, about South by Southwest that I was in. And he got the idea, he goes, you know, Mojo's pretty good in that documentary. Maybe we ought to do a whole movie about it. And so he literally showed up at my house in, when I was living in San Diego, showed up at my house with the camera still in the box. You know, and we had to figure out how to work it. <laughs> And, and luckily for him, uh, you know, all during the 80s and 90s at the height of Mo Mojo Mania, uh, I kept all the tapes from all the different things we did, all the, you know, uh, public access TV shows, all the way up to MTV. So I had two huge boxes of tapes of just, you know, either, either uh, music videos, live footage, TV interviews. There was a whole bunch of stuff there. Yeah. And then he started interviewing everybody. He's, you know, he, I bet you Earl Freedom interviewed about 100 people, but only about 10 of them made it in the movie. And yeah, and then he worked on it. He had it all, you know, he had it all, he had all the parts digitized, he had everything together. And then it, it kind of uh, it hit a roadblock and set dormant for like five years. Right. Uh, I tried to get him. I, I remember saying, look, I'll pay. I'll pay somebody to edit it. He goes, oh, no, I'm the, I got to edit. I'm the only one that understands Mojo. Right, you know, you know, when you're in a band, you know, it's not, you're together 24 hours a day. So he was in the van with me in the motel room. He heard all the Mojo shit. He, you know, he knew exactly what I was doing. So it was best that he did wait. Yeah, so this thing has been incubating all together about 10 years. And it got delayed also. It was supposed to, you know, come out two years ago, but then the, the virus hit and South by got canceled. I thought, well, apparently gods are punishing Mojo for something. I, I'm sure I did something wrong. You know, it must, I must have crossed a line somewhere. <laughs> you know what it was? It was that Elvis is everywhere song you did. And they were like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and occasionally people get mad about that. But usually... You know, Elvis fans realize I love Elvis too. I'm yeah. celebrating Elvis, but I'm also saying his fans are insane. You know, the, the two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> right. And I think that's what resonates so well with your music is, you know, you, you draw that thin line of entertainment and also parodying so many genres and also creating your own kind of punk country alternative genre when you were doing songs like Elvis is Everywhere. So if you had to categorize yourself in a genre, what would it be to Mojo? I, originally, one of my original ideas was imagine if Jerry Lee Lewis was playing with the Clash and uh, Richard Pryor was fronting. That was, you know, <laughs> and maybe throw in a little uh, Hunter Thompson and Bruce Springsteen. And, uh, but that was like my, what I wanted to do. You know, a lot of people had the same idea at the same time. They loved the energy and the excitement of punk rock. And, but they also loved uh, Hank Williams and Chuck Berry. So there was a whole bunch of bands, cow, whatever you call them, cow punk, you know, bands in the uh, early 80s. And I was, you know, part of that. And I also knew that my, my role was to be kind of the court jester. You don't need to take Mojo serious. You go to the Mojo show, you have a few drinks, you have a few laughs. Hey, Mojo said something funny, you know. Mojo making, right, Mojo's making fun of people who need being making fun of. So, uh, you know, so whatever you call it, cowpunk, psychobilly, progressive country, all that, all those things, none of those matter. You know, we, I found there was, you know, there was a band in San Diego, the Beat Farmers, and then up in L.A., there was Dwight Yoakam, and there was the Blasters and Los Lobos, and, you know, and X and Gun Club, and there was a and Blood on the Saddle. There was a group of bands that were doing a similar thing, and around the country. There was the Del Lords and the Del Fuegos, and there was, you know, Jason and the Scorchers, uh, Georgia Satellites. We all had a similar idea that we're going to put the energy and excitement of the punk rock with American roots music. Right. And I don't yeah, know. Right. And, 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 and in my case, I was kind of running it through a Richard Pryor, Bill Hicks filter. You know, I can't, my, most of my best ideas I got from Richard Pryor or Bill Hicks. And I, I just want to say that up front right now in case they, 
<laughs> See, when I'm in hell playing cards with Richard Pryor and Bill Hicks, uh, I just I don't want them saying, hey, Mojo, you stole our shit. No, no, no. I, I said I, I gave you credit. <laughs> Right, and now we're kind of getting a resurgence of Psycho Billy, too. I don't know if you heard of this cat called uh, Amigo the Devil, but he is really great, and he sounds right up your alley for music. Amigo too. the Devil, no. that's That uh, does sound right up my alley. <laughs> I need him to play on my big wing ding down here in Austin at <laughs> South by Southwest. I'll look up Amigo the Devil. Right, and you know, one of the things, real roots music, real crazy music, music that's on the edge, music that scares your parents, it's always happening. It's just a lot of times it's happening way underground. And every now and then it bubbles up to the top. You know, it bubbles up to the top. It may, you know, a few bands break through and make, you know, and have a hit. The Stray Cats have a hit, you know, but then it goes back. You know, it goes back in, back into the hole. And, right, it's never going to be giant mainstream music. Uh, it's, you know, hopefully at its best, it's a little too dangerous for that. Yeah, exactly. And I agree with that. And one of the things I really liked about the documentary is it focused on your music for the most part, but you also talk about, you know, stuff that you did before. And people may not realize this, but you've been in a couple movies as well. Like you were in a trauma movie at one point. <laughs> in yes, yeah, Butt Crack the movie, which sounds like it's going to be pretty funny. Mo uh, Mojo Nixon's in Butt Crack the movie. It's so bad, it's good. It's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> well if it's trauma i mean they kind of specialize in that <laughs> right but it, uh i you know and i was also i was in great balls of fire that was the first movie i was in right. it was a big thing uh you know uh you know that, that's how i got one owner writer to be in the debbie gibson's pregnant with a two-headed love child video and i was in a, i really can't act that you know <laughs> uh i wanted i wanted to be like hoyt axton you know or tom waits and in fact that uh, the reason I'm in Super Mario Brothers is because Tom Waits wanted like three times as much money, and uh, <laughs> right. my my friend, my friend that uh, was one of the casting, the extras casting director, she goes, "We can get Mojo for a third of that. He's a third rate Tom Waits." You know? <laughs> and uh, but anyway, yeah, I I can be me. I can play this character who you know who I am, uh, but I really can't act that. If you want me to act, I can act like a fool. But that's about that it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you brought up Great Balls of Fire, and that also has one of my favorite uh, movie talk show hosts, Joe Bob Briggs, as the radio DJ guy in there. Oh, yeah, no, but uh, me and Joe Bob uh, hung. I pestered him until he uh, told me to go away. I was also <laughs> in this car 54, Where Are You, with David Johansson. And then uh, I didn't have a trailer, so he let me go. I was just on the shoot for like one day. He let me hang in his trailer, and after 9,000 New York Dolls questions, he goes, you can stay, because it was raining. You can stay, but no more fucking dolls. Shut up! <laughs> and from this documentary, there's going to be a lot of footage you guys saw that didn't get made into the documentary. So what were some of the moments that you kind of wish could have got made or gotten into the documentary? If it, it was one thing, one thing from MTV, uh, you know, I did, uh, I did like some uh, live remotes for MTV. I did the MTV, uh, you know, spots, you know, kind of promo, you know, promo things. And then I did uh, Super Bowl because that was in San Diego. And I did uh, uh, Spring Break down in Fort Lauderdale. And then I also did one in New Orleans at uh, Mardi Gras. And there was footage from MTV of me and Dr. John playing some made up Mardi Gras song. I'm playing guitar. He's got on a full outfit. We're in a hotel. <laughs> Never could find that. Never, never, never could find that one. So uh, that that was one thing I wish that we'd had a tape of that we couldn't find. And there was most everything else we did have. You know, we did. You know, some stuff we chose not to show because it was too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> right, like somebody might get in trouble. Nixon documentary. You almost have to have the Johnny Knoxville jackass uh, disclaimer on board saying. Do not perform any of this while you're watching this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this is getting ready to play at South by Southwest. And you've been there a few times, which was in the documentary. What were some of your past favorite memories at playing at South by Southwest or just attending South by Southwest? 
Well, you know, it's, uh, I was at either the second or third one we played. I think maybe the third one, I gave a speech. I gave this speech and I was, I was super, so this is way early. This is 88 or 89 or something. And Bob Criscow, the uh, rock writer from the Village Voice, he was giving the main speech. I was given like what they call the introduction or invocation. And I called every, I think I called all the major labels uh, butt sniffing swine or something. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I just remember how nervous I was before I did it. And we played a bunch of great shows. We played a show at Liberty Lunch. Uh, we played a show at Liberty Lunch uh, with our buddy Eric Roscoe Amble, super high on mushrooms uh, during the show. And he had a B Bender guitar, you know, which is kind of, you can do that country uh, thing. But anyway, he was playing it like he was Ornette Coleman. He was playing free jazz because he was so fucking high. <laughs> and, you know, we did, and also at South by we did, you know, we did that record with Jello, and we did perform most of that record on, you know, at Liberty Lunch. I tell you what, man, that record was top. You know, Jello songs don't follow the Chuck Berry, Hank Williams chord patterns. I had a headache. I had a headache after that show so bad I couldn't get high. That's how bad big a headache I had. I felt like I had taken like the LSATs in Spanish. You know, I was just like, oh, yeah, but and. For the last 20 years, I've been hosting this party at South by Southwest at the Continental Club on Saturday. I think the first one was in 89. And, uh, you know, uh, this Alan Oldies band plays first. I play last. There's eight other bands in between. It's all free. People come, you know, people come every year and they'd say, oh, it's great. So thank you, Mojo. But it, I'm really just a figurehead. I mean, you know, I'm just Steve from the Steve Wertheimer from the Continental. He's the one that puts it all together. I'm the one that reaps all the glory. <laughs> right. And you know, with this finally being played this year, it's got to feel like a 180 from all that stuff that's happened the past few years, you know, when the world shut down. So, how does it feel to finally have this in the audience hands and get the reaction from oh, no. by Southwest? It'll be great. You know, we played on the Outlaw Country Cruise. It went great there. People, people were just excited to be out the house. People were just happy to, uh, you know, to be to be in a bar drinking and talking shit. You know, as, as opposed to sitting at home while, you know, watching this Netflix going, well, you know, I wonder what's going to happen to her. You know, <laughs> uh, so I think it'll be great. Uh, the movie premiere will be on uh, Wednesday. And then we'll play twice. We'll play twice at the Continental Club. And, and Saturday, we'll just be, we'll be cutting loose. Uh, you know, on Thursday, well, I think we'll just play the regular, but it'll be just be regular mojo craziness. Saturday, full super psycho mojo craziness. <laughs> oh, man, wish I was there for that. <laughs> oh, no, it, come, wait, what's that Clemson on the wall behind you? Wait, wait what's going on there? <laughs> you know, I was born in Chapel Hill. You know, I'm a Tar Heel. <laughs> You know, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. My dad went to Clemson, so. Okay, well, well okay. Well, my dad went to Carolina. I didn't even go there. I was just born there. I, went, you know, I grew up, you know, I grew up in Danville, uh, Virginia, which is just up the road. And, right. uh, you know, and, but I saw where Carolina lost uh, in the ACC tournament, but they're, they're still going to get it. And, of course, the team that beat y'all last night was the team that beat Clemson in overtime on a buzzer beater. So we're just over here like. Right. Well, Virginia, you know, I know we're off topic, but Virginia Tech <laughs> needed to win to get in, right? They were yeah. one, of the, one of the last teams, right? So they were there. But how did you like when Carolina laid a turd in Coach K's punch bowl at his big going away party? <laughs> oh, we were at the local VFW watching that, and everybody was loving that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it, it, you know, Car Duke is uh, probably a better team, but Carolina – uh, played their best game of the year and just spoiled the party a little bit. Anyway, back to the greatness of me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, are you at South by Southwest this year? Or you said you were there this year, right? Yeah, I'm here. I'm in Austin now. We went to the uh, Cheryl Crow movie last night. We want to see what the competition is doing. And uh, we're, I'm here. Uh, I'm here at uh, Matt Esky, Earl Freedom's house. And, uh, and I'll be going, uh, you know, we'll be going to see some movies. I'll be, you know, hobnobbing, kissing babies and shaking hands. And we got, you know, and we're going to do on Wednesday, the movie premiere is at the State Theater. 
And then we're playing Thursday night an official South by South showcase at the Continental Club where uh, maybe, you know, maybe I can run some record executives away. And then, uh, and then like I said, on Saturday, <laughs> we'll be hosting the uh, party. Yeah, that's like me doing karaoke. If you ever wanted to clear a, clap, a crowd out in the house, just play Mojo Nixon. <laughs> that's right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, congratulations on this documentary. One of the best docu music documentaries of the year, hands down, I think. A lot of people are going to love it. Even if they don't know who Mojo Nixon is yet, I think it's going to sit well with a lot of people because of everything that's involved with it. And it's so well done. And it spawns my entire lifetime because there are shows to where I wasn't even born yet you had in the documentary. AJ, thanks a lot for having me. And uh, yeah, don't forget, my name's Bojo Nixon, and you can hear me on Sirius XM at Low Country.